got a E-Motiva PT100 preamp on the desk on the bench at the moment and I haven't seen one of these before but uh, the power supply is dead the owner was a YouTuber who reached out to me said I can't get it fixed so here it is it's a very slick looking thing with a nice display I think they're about 300 quid and it's the preamp yeah, it mixes everything together and matches it and stuffs it out the back in theory so what have we got anyway, I've taken the lid off as you can see and I can tell you the power supply is not working these voltages up here are all skew if basically they've actually oh, let's switch to the other camera you're gonna actually no I'll show you this so the power comes in there goes onto that board comes out that board and then drives a separate Mickey Mouse power supply and that's an independent 5 volt supply so that's the standby supply for logic if you like running all the time and when you hit the starter button, it uh, provides a low voltage DC 5 volts rather than running the main power supply. The problem, there is 5 volts on there. You can see they've labelled the uh, connections for us. So there it is. And then there's the audio board. And then down in fried, inside the front of this, it's still plugged in. Yeah, it is. Well, it was. I thought I could feel that. And then we've got a display and a logic board along the front edge there, look. So let's switch to the other camera and have a look at this beastie to see what's wrong with it, shall we? Emotiva. So this is the power supply, nice black PCB, so it's going to work absolutely fine. We know that black makes it work better and looks a lot cooler. Also shows that a lot of the flux and dirt that's on the board. So what have we got? Let's have a look. Down this end, starting from the right where the mains comes in, we've got our main AC input and then we've got the slave AC output to the uh, 5 volt separate power supply the backup sort of standby power supply shows you that uh, keeps the thing powered up in standby so this is turned off normally I think and we've just got a simple uh, usual common mode rejection choke a 431k barrister so that's 275 volts AC working a fuse obviously and then rectifier diode, reservoir capacitor, and a PWM management conversion. Is there a separate FET? No, there's no separate FET that I can see on there. So really, that is a all-in-one switching chip. And what's the number on that? I don't know if I recognise that one. Normally, they've got one pin missing, and that pin number seven is normally not present. Let's have a look. I'll just get my glass. My glass. Where the hell's that? Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, okay, yeah, so I can see that. It's a ICE2A165. ICE2A165. Um, let's see if I can find the data sheet for that. Alright, okay, yeah, I found it. It's an 800 core MOS uh, by Infineon, and Infineon don't make it anymore. I don't know if there's alternatives, but I know there's a 265 and the 365, so they're probably updated versions. So has the chip gone? I mean, op obviously. Um, it's usually the chip, but not always. I'm just jerking around with my microphone at the moment because it's in the wrong place. Yeah, so I anyway, know what we're saying. Yep, and it's all not always the chip. And then we've got a small transformer, class Y capacitor, opto isolator to let this feed back to the other side to let known that the power side, the demand from this side to regulate the voltages. And we've got two. Can't see the rectifier diodes on this side. There must be some rectified diodes. And because it's an audio power supply, you can see here it's got plus and minus 12 volt rails there. The naught volt pin in the middle. And so it's a split power supply uh, for the uh, operational amplifiers to get any sort of decent audio noise, low noise, and accurate. Uh, high fidelity if you like uh, minimum distortion amplifier stages you really need a split power supply it's so much easier and you can see now that they are so there are 78 12 eighths that's a 12 volt series one amp analog power regulator analog power regulator and then a 7912 so the 79 means negative rail so that's a minus 12 volt rail regulator. Two reservoir caps, caps here for the supply lines and that's about it on this side. Now I mean the, the best thing to do with something like this is just go poking around for a little while. Uh, it's around the other way now so uh, don't get confused. I probably will but you mustn't. 
Okay, so what have we got? What have we got here? So, we need something to go underneath that end to give us a little bit of lift. That's not a good idea. Will that work? I think that might just work for us. Yeah, just about. If I start moving this around, I've noticed in some of my videos it moves around a lot. Alright, so, actually, it'd be very on the other way, wouldn't it? <coughs> And we can see the component references. Put the lifting device up this end, which happens to be a screwdriver. I heard a joke once. It's a screwdriver. So leave it out. I'm half an hour late as it is. Anyway, so what have we got? We've got rectifier diodes. So you can see on the screen, I'm on diode continuity mode. If I just show you the meter, this is the meter that's connected by Bluetooth to the computer. And uh, we're on diode continuity, which is this one and we're there and we've got bluetooth on so that should work that should be working now right so there you go you've got the meter display there up on the screen and then we've got this uh beastie to have a quick look at let's just check the diodes okay so we've got this rectified die pack so let's just check that no connection that way red lead on the that end and we've got 0.53 volt volts that looks good uh same on this one 0.534. If you saw less than that, you would um, think it was shorted or there was a short somewhere. So, yeah, point, point 0.549. And then this one. And then if you look around the, if you reverse bias, bias the diode, you should get something different getting overload at the moment. So, those diodes seem to be okay. There's a diode here in the snubber circuit, I think. Is that the snubber? Yeah. Let's see if that one's good. Yeah, so we've got 0.53 on that one. That one's uh, okay too. There's another diode here. It's a 20.2 volt Zener. So if you forward bias, or reverse bias a diode as the Zener as it's intended to be used, you can check just the normal silicon duct junction. And we got 0.62, that's correct. So we're actually putting the positive lead on the uh, same non-bar end anode of the diode and it conducts. Okay, so that's du normally di um, Zener diodes just go short. So they're okay. So the semiconductors in the primary side are okay. We haven't obviously checked the chip. Usually is the chip. But this one is an Infineon chip here, which is a pretty good make. And the Infineon stuff is just generally more reliable. So let's just do a quick meter of the secondary side and see that we've got anything funny going on with the secondary side. All right, so this is the low voltage side of the, uh, of the unit here. Okay, so on the board we've got these two rectifier diodes. There's the transformer, there's the positive rail rectifier diode because the that's connected to there by the look of it, and that is the um, bar end of the diode, so that's the positive uh, DC supply rail. And then another rectifier diode down here, D3, is the bar is up that end, so that point there is a negative uh, power supply rail. And then if you look at the power supply rails, we've got these obviously got these two regulators which we saw earlier connected to the power supply rail. Um, and these two smoothing capacitors. So that's sorry, let's just look across the negative uh, power supply rail smoothing capacitor. And that looks like shorted. If we just compare that to the positive rail, which will be there. You can see the voltage is climbing as the capacitor charges and then it's gone over the three volt limit on the actual meter so yeah uh, there's nothing you can draw from that except that something is shorted on this rail either this regulator or one of the capacitors what make are they what make are these caps Deegan anybody know Deegan uh, 105 degree, 47, 470 microfarad, 50 volts. They're pretty small for 470 microfarad, 50 volt uh, capacitors, but then the Chinese ones are always half the size of the Western one, apart from the other appendages, which is the other way around. Um, yeah, so we've got a short on the negative supply rail. So we can take these regulators out and check them. We can take these caps out and check them. But we haven't actually finished metering all the active components, which could have failed here at the moment. Um, what have we got? What have we got? 
Right, so let's check the rectifier dies themselves then, shall we? You can see there, so if I forward bias the rectifier diode, sorry, reverse di bias, you can see it climbing. If I forward bias the diode for the 12 volt rail, we've got 248 millivolts, which tells me that that is a Schottky diode, a Schottky rectifier diode. Um, because the low voltage drop it uses a tunnel effect so it's not like an ordinary uh, just a pn silicon diode junction um, usually in these power supplies this is the probably a more modern power supply that you need to have fast recovery diodes in this position if you just simply put an ordinary silicon rectifier diode in there it would work but something might get hot or overheat and just wouldn't be efficient and so they put these uh, shock key diodes they've got a fast switch off and they've got a low forward voltage drop when they're forward biased okay and of course they're rectifying the 50 or so kilohertz that's coming from this transformer to power the amplifier circuits with plus and minus 12 volts dc uh, so check diode 3 now uh, which way around is that that way and you can see look there's a direct short of diode across diode 3 now um, that isn't in itself an indication that the diode's gone because if you think about it you've got uh, the transformer winding going to the one power rail at uh, the other end of the transformer wire winding goes to here and um, then it goes through the rectifier to the supply rail if there's a short on the supply rail somewhere else we could just be seeing the actual short uh, connected through the transformer secondary winding so it could be this diode or it could be something else but what I am going to say is that these if you look at the CTEC battery charger repair and other repairs, switch mode power supplies, these shocky rectifiers are pretty unreliable. Uh, normally you just don't see failures of uh, the secondary side rectification diodes on switch mode power supplies. Generally speaking, it's not a common component to fail. But where they put these, um, these shocky 1 amp SS1110, SS1110. Yeah, yeah. So SS one one zero. It's a one thousand volt one amp Schottky uh, diode. Doesn't specify the recovery time in it. Although it would be quite quick, so it might be, not be an issue. They may have just put Schottky in there because it's got a lower forward voltage drop, so therefore it makes the power supply a little bit more efficient. Especially if they were struggling to find some efficiency. So the easiest thing at the moment, I could take the, re the regulator out and see the regulator short of the capacitor, but I can just unhook this diode at the moment and see. It's glued on the break it off there yeah it's glued on with one of those epoxy dots because this is a reflow soldered board so it's actually the components on this side are epoxied onto the actual board itself so let's have a look at this diode now so if we now just get this little beastie Whoop. Uh, if you can see that which way is which way is the bar it came off that way so this end it should be 200 millivolts, 250 millivolts. It's uh, 7 millivolts. And this side, yeah, that diode is shorted. That is, and that's not unusual. If you see a Schottky rectif rectifier diode, a small one, an SMA type package or an SMB, then check the diodes because they don't normally fail but on these boards they do not just these boards but the boards that employ those diodes and if you look at the ctec video for the ctec battery charger repair of which i've fixed five or six with all the same fault on it's the fast one amp 1000 volt shock you diode that's failed all right so now if we just check across that diode now we should see the power supply rail uh that way around because it's a negative rail so i put it there and you can see it climbing and it's gone overload so actually the short has been removed so let's find a diode to go on there where can we find a diode to go on there right so i don't if things fail especially things that don't normally fail i don't like replacing like with like because um well because why 
because it's likely to go again. You know, components just don't fail. This is not hot and it's not, it's on the secondary side, low voltage. So, you know, the, if you look at the CTEC uh, repair, you can see the diode was being overcurrented. Um, it says, hold on, on the data sheet, it says uh, one, one amp normal forward current, peak current 1.3. All right. So I'm going to put one of these in. Uh, this is a 1300 volts instead of a 1000 volt. It's not voltage that's destroyed this anyway, so it's, it's going to be current. And it's got a much higher peak current and it's 1.3 amps. So I'm going to put one of those in. I'm going to upgrade it by 300 milliamps and upgrade the peak current by um, an order of magnitude. And we should see that working okay then, I think. So it goes in that way round. So let's just get a bit of the old solder flux and some flux. Don't really need to use flux, but I'm just a sad old man addicted to flux, I'm afraid. I do like the smell. And uh, my dad was always soldering stuff all the time. And he was like a master with uh, leaded filler. I remember I heated up the side of my car once trying to fix the door frame. And it was a Triumph GT6 and there's a massive glot blob of lead just fell out and I was only 16 I was like bereft I didn't realize there's gonna be a big mass of lead filler in the uh, right by the window where the uh, vertical window uh, jam if you call it or, or, or uh, edge comes down to the wing by the door where the door opens behind you as you get in and um, yeah my dad came along with the piece he got himself a bit of wood covered it in grease got a bar of lead solder it was 4060 rather than 6040 you can make a nice eutectic sludge with it and proceeded to fill this thing in wonderfully wiping it with a cloth it was lovely job he did and uh, apparently he was taught that when he did his apprenticeship at Rolls-Royce um, And what was I talking about? I'm talking rubbish now, aren't I? Anyway, so there's that diode in position. I check that we've got it the right way around. We have. Give it a bit of a clean. And my son's nicked my squirty bottle for the IPA, so I'm going to have to pour a little bit on here. Actually, the whole board has got this horrible sort of. Um, can you see all this? flux no clean flux that's the trouble with black balls if you use no clean flux in the production line actually, um, on a wave solder machine and then you don't clean the boards afterwards because the whole point of no clean flux is to stop the um, reduce the pollution due to the manufacturing or the assembly of the board process we used to wash our boards in deionized water and before that it was our clone which was a um, high, uh, what's it called a hydrofluorocarbon HFC no not in the um, it's just fluorocarbon, isn't it? It's not an HFC. HFCs are friendlier to the environment. It was just ordinary art clone. And the place was awash with it. It's incredible. And we used to clean the boards. But you get this horrible sort of uh, mess on it. I really need a piece of tissue or something. Yeah, I'll give it a bit of a dab. My dab hand at this. Can you see it? It's horrible, isn't it? Anyway, we're not looking for a cosmetic repair, we're just removing our extra flux so they don't have any electrical problems. Okay, there it is. So let's put it back in and we'll try it out, shall we? I'll just go and get the chassis and we'll stick it back in position. Okay, so let's stick this back in and see what we can do, shall we? It seems odd to me that, you know, that um, these people would, they do all this clever audio design, all this, all that stuff. And clearly a bunch of bright chappies, but they get somebody who's designed a Chinese power supply to make the power supply for them. And, uh, you know, they should at least consult people that know what they're doing, really. Anybody can design a power supply. Just look at the data sheet and the application notes. But you have to test them and you have to check current flowing in every component dynamically with a sort of a high impedance or current probe and make sure everything is happy.
Anyway, so here she is, she's back in position. Do the screws up, how <laughs> confident am I? So what would have happened is the um, switch mode power supply on this side would see this as a dead short virtually because it's uh, driving through that diode directly into that capacitor. So this would have gone into current lockout. Now some of these chips can survive being on current lockout, you know, trying to power up and powering down, powering up and powering down, and they can survive it. It, you know, it goes over current, shuts down the output stage, and then tries again, almost on a cycle by cycle basis, depending on which what the uh, network of components you have, whether there's a time constant in it or not. Things like soft start, and also to allow it to over current over a few cycles rather than shut down on the same cycle. Now some of these chips will survive quite happily in that situation others will survive for a little while and they'll just go bang or short circuit fortunately if this doesn't work it'll just blow the fuse and it hasn't blown the fuse and so we know there's a bolt on this side so i'm just gonna bite the bullet at the moment as it were and i uh, move my camera over so i can bloody well see okay so i'll plug this thing in Plugs all different, so we can't get them transposed, I suppose. Yeah, one more, for one more. There we are, there's one more. And then uh, power, I'll make sure there's no power in it. I know there's no power in it, but I always have to double check. Can't trust myself. Right, so we'll stick the power in. <laughs> Actually, double check everything first to make sure we've got everything connected correctly. It looks like it, doesn't it? They're all in, they're all happy. There's nothing rattling around in the base. So, plug the power in. Right, no activity on the front panel at the moment. Let's try turning it on. Turn it on the back first. Hey, yeah, it's working. Emotiva, it says, PT-100, lovely blue characters on the front, lights are on, somebody's home, so that's an improvement. Now we just have a look at these voltages again, let's put it onto the uh, volt range and see if we've got the right volts on this blinking power supply now. So what was missing before was plus or minus 12, so let's go onto the ground there, put it in the 12 volt slot. There we go, 11.94. And 12.23 right minus 12.23 so that's within the spread of uh, differences allowed so that is now i believe fixed emotiva i'll show you the front of it i'll show you the front you can see there it is lovely all lit up and doing its business so there you are so if you've got one of those um that's the way to go over that board and just look for duff duff semiconductors and i suspect i don't know but i suspect that if the power supply does fail it's going to be that diode because i've seen those shocky diodes rectifier diodes fail in all sorts of power supplies and i i wouldn't necessarily fit one of those i'd put a fast silicon recovery rectifier diode in rather than a shock key really for power to be honest gut feeling is shock key and power don't really um you know and they're, they're not up there in the reliability uh, stakes anyway but the ss100 diode is a cheap and nasty thing anyway and I've put an Infinium one in so yeah let's see how it goes but that ends the repair and I uh, hope you watch that and if you could just leave a subscribe down there if you're not subscribed and leave a like if you liked it uh, I appreciate that so yeah good luck if you're fixing yours